Hi, Carl here for Pro-V TV, and today we're taking a look at Canon's little EOS R, specifically how well this matches up to the, their C200, because the C200 is one of the most popular cameras for our customers at the moment, particularly for anyone doing corporate interviews or any of that kind of work. The C200 is great for a list of reasons which I'm gonna mention a little later on, but the first time we saw the little EOS R, we thought, ah, have Canon just released that perfect little small B camera for the C200? Because in that sort of corporate interview, you want a main camera and then you want a smaller camera as the close up of the face. It's a very specific little use case, but this might well just be Canon's perfect answer for it. So in this video, we're gonna explore how well this works as a B camera to the C200, how close the image matches, if there's any pitfalls, anything you need to look out for, and the pros and cons of choosing the EOS R as your B camera for your C200. Okay, so let's look in more detail at the specs of each camera. We're gonna focus on the MP4 side of the C200. Of course, it can do RAW, which is much higher quality, but I'm pretty sure that most of our customers in this sort of a situation are gonna be using the MP4. So on the C200, you get 8-bit MP4 files. On the EOS R, you also get 8-bit MP4 files, but at a slightly higher data rate with an all i 400 megabits a second codec. If you take a HDMI signal out into something like the Atomos Ninja 5, you're gonna be getting 10-bit 4K in ProRes files. So that is fantastic. It doesn't mean though that the image quality out of the EOS R is gonna necessarily be better than the C200, but what it is definitely gonna mean is that you're not gonna be compromising on the quality of your codec and your video files on your smaller B camera. Very commonly in situations like this, you've got a large A camera that has a fantastic codec inside of it, and you've got a small little B camera that has a much weaker codec inside it. And that is not the case here. Both of these are gonna get fantastic results. The main headline feature that makes us think these are gonna work so well as an A camera and a B camera is the Canon's dual pixel autofocus. This is of course the main reason that people are using the C200 so much for this sort of work in the first place. Having a box around your subject's face and having the camera just track focus with them throughout the interview is just so unbelievably useful in this sort of a situation. And the EOS R has the exact same capabilities. With crop factors, the C200 has a 1.6 times crop factor. Now obviously in 1080p, the EOS R is a full frame camera and then also in stills it's a full frame camera, so it has a one times crop. In 4K video, that crops into a 1.74 times crop. Now, this is obviously considered a disadvantage when you're talking about the EOS R by itself. But when you're talking about it as a B camera for the C200, this could actually be considered a plus because that 1.74 times is a lot closer to the 1.6 times of the C200 than the whole full frame sensor is. So in this sort of a situation where this is your larger um, interview shot and this is the close up on their face, you're really not gonna notice that crop factor difference at all. So we decided the best way to try out how well these two worked with each other was to recreate a little interview setup of our own. So in this showroom here, we just sat me down on an armchair, lit with a fairly sort of dark theatrical style lighting. And then we put the C200 in front of me as the main camera, Dan sat next to it as the interviewer, and then we had the EOS R over to one side of the close up of my face. This is a very common setup which we see all of the time with our customers. In fact, something that a lot of people like to do is put the smaller B camera on a little bit of a motion controlled slider so that it will just creep from side to side like that completely unattended throughout the interview, which is really nice. And because of the dual pixel autofocus on both cameras, you really don't have to do anything else and you can leave those cameras alone, unoperated um, at all. The only thing you need to watch out for is your subject physically moving out of frame. Anything else, they'll be absolutely fine and you can focus on purely interviewing your subject and getting the information that you need out of them and focus on the content, which is after all the most important thing here. 
So if you regularly shoot interviews by yourself, this sort of a setup is gonna make life an awful lot easier for you. So with the first interview, what we did is we kept the C200 in C-Log3, which is what we normally use with the C200. Now we did find actually that the colors were more difficult to match between the two of them than I had expected. The skin tones and particularly the bike behind me looked a lot more magenta with the C200 than they did with the EOS R. Now we found we could correct for this, but they just didn't match quite as well as I thought they were going to straight out of the box. So what we did is we came back in and filmed another try, but we changed the C200 back to the original Canon Log 1, the same log that's inside the EOS R. Now this is nowhere near as flat as C-Log 3 or C-Log 2, so you're gonna be losing a little bit of the dynamic range of the C200, but in controlled light situations like interviews like this, that's not normally too much of a problem. You can always flip it back to C-Log 3 for any other filming you're gonna do. For interviews like this, that normally works fine. And we did find that after that, the cameras were really easy to match. The footage just looked pretty much the same. All we had to do was a simple contrast and saturation boost to get them out of looking like log footage. And then we added a very slight little bit of warmth to the C200. And I was really quite happy with how well they matched after that. Now the EOS R isn't the only choice for those looking for a small B camera for the C200. Canon of course make two other small cameras which would do a pretty good job, the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark II. But I personally think the EOS R definitely has the edge for video recording. For example, it's got 4K MP4 in it rather than motion JPEG in those cameras. It's a much more edit friendly codec. It's got the 10-bit video output, it's got the flippy screen, and a whole host of other little tweaks for video that make it a much better camera for video work than either of those two options. There's lots of other fantastic cameras from the competition as well, things like the Sony a7 III or a7R Mark III. There's the GH5, GH5S from Panasonic, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. All of those are absolutely fantastic cameras, but none of them are gonna match the colors on the C200 as well as the EOS R. And of course, you'd miss out on that face detect autofocus, which is so useful for this sort of a situation. Now, the best choice for a B camera for the C200 it's of course gonna be another C200. Then they'd match absolutely perfectly. But the C200 is significantly more expensive than the EOS R, and of course, it's a lot physically larger. It's great having a small little B camera like this because you can just hide it away in your camera bag and only bring it out when you need it. And it's of course a fantastic stills camera as well. That's its primary use. And so if you've got to do any sort of stills work to go alongside your video work, or you just need some stills for some behind the scenes shots, things like that, the EOS R is exactly here where you need it. So I think it's one of the best options on the market right now for a B camera for the C200. Of course, it's not perfect. There's lots of things I'd like to change about this camera. Things like 4K 50p would be a fantastic addition because the C200 can do it. It would be great if this could do that too. And the main thing I really miss is some form of redundancy recording, having dual card slots or the ability to record externally as well as internally. It can do this in 8-bit, but of course, if you're recording externally to an Atmos device, you probably want to enable the 10-bit output to get better quality video files. And when you enable that 10-bit out, it can't handle both giving 10-bit output and 8-bit internal recording, and so it shuts down the internal recording on the camera. So even though you're recording externally, you still only have one source of your video file and no redundancy. So that would be a fantastic improvement to the EOS R, is to have some form of redundancy recording. But for the most part, I think this is probably the best option and certainly gonna be my recommendation for people looking for a B camera for the C200. But let me know what all of you think down in the comment section down below. And if you want to buy either of these cameras, of course the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.